guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about one of the most important special triangles in geometry, the right isosceles triangle. But first, let's remember the basics about right triangles. When a triangle has a 90 degree angle, or we can also say a right angle, we can use the following formula developed by Pythagoras. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Anytime you have a right triangle, you will have the hypotenuse and two legs. We can always know that the hypotenuse is the longest size and it is always opposite to the 90 degree angle. All right, so let's talk about the right isosceles triangle. What happens? There are several characteristics that will tell you when you have a right isosceles triangle. You can see that this triangle has two equal sides. So this size is always equal to this size. Now I can go ahead and see which one is the size of the hypotenuse. Well, if I call this guy x, this guy has to be called again x. The hypotenuse is going to be the value of c. Now that I know this, I can go ahead and use Pythagoras and say a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Let's go ahead and substitute the value of a and b for x. We get that x squared plus x squared is equal to c squared. Adding x squared plus x squared gives me 2x squared. Since I need to leave x by itself, I need to square root both sides. That way I can eliminate the square. Remember, the square root is the enemy of the square because that way they will cancel each other. Now that I do this, my final answer is going to be x times the square root of 2. That comes from x, I'm sorry, that comes from the square root of 2x squared, which is going to give me x x square root of 2. All right, but do we have an easy way of doing this? And yes, you can actually follow this ratio, x, x, x square root of 2. Let's go ahead and do an example. If they give me that x is equal to 2, I can go ahead and follow this ratio. I can say that one size is going to be 2, the other size is going to be 2, and finally my hypotenuse is going to be 2 square root of 2. As you can see here, I'm just filling in for the values of x. So let's go ahead and practice. So if this is 2, this other side is going to be 2, and finally the hypotenuse is going to be 2 square root of 2. Let's do more examples. Let's say that this size is 5. Well, you tell me. This size is going to be what? I hope you say 5. Therefore, my hypotenuse is going to be 5 the square root of 2. What about if now my hypotenuse is 10 the square root of 2? Well, one side is going to be 10 and the other side is going to be 10 as well. Well, you tell me the answer. If this size is 6, how much is this other guy? He also has to be 6. Therefore, the hypotenuse is going to be 6 square root of 2. If this guy is 7, this guy is 7, and this guy is going to be 7 square root of 2. And I'm just being repetitive. That way you know that anytime you have a 45, 45, 90, and they give you the size, you can go ahead and figure it out, the hypotenuse, just by following this ratio. Now, what happens if they give me now the hypotenuse? Just like this, 3 square root of 2. You're going to do the same thing. The same value is going to be 3, and this other value is going to be 3. Wow. Now they give me a 10 here. How can I solve this? You're going to ask, and you're going to tell me, what is my square root of 2? All right. Let's go ahead and call this guy x, and let's go ahead and let's call this other guy also x. Remember, they are both the same size. I can go ahead and do Pythagoras again. And following the formula, I have that x squared plus x squared is equal to 10x squared. Now, 2x squared is equal to 100, dividing both sides by 2. As you see here, 100 divided by 2 is going to give me 50. Finally, squaring root both sides will give me the square root of 50. Once I simplify this radical, that's going to give me 5 square root of 2. 
for those of you that are asking me how to do this, well, remember this is another lesson, but I divide 50 into 25 and two. Since I already know that the square root of 25 is five, the two is gonna be inside the radical. So that is why my answer is five square root of two. Now, do I have any trick for this? And yes, let's go ahead and figure it out. If I have a 10 here or a whole number, just like this one, just go ahead and divide it by two and then just add the square root of two, all right? Let's see if the shortcut works. And this is how I do it. When the hypotenuse is a whole number, just divide the number by two and add the square root of two to the size. Let's go ahead and practice. If this is 12, the trick tells me to divide it by two and add the square root of two. Therefore, my x is gonna be six square root of two and six square root of two. Let's do more. 20, let's see if you can tell me the answer. Divide 20 by two. How much is that? That is 10. Now add the square root of two, and one of my sides is gonna be 10 square root of two. The other one is gonna be 10 square root of two. What about this guy's four? Again, two square root of two, two square root of two. What about if it's one? It is the same thing. You're gonna go ahead and divide it by two. One divided by two is one half. So my answer is one half square root of two and one half times the square root of two. What about if this guy is six? Six divided by two is three, three square root of two, three square root of two. What about if now they give me that one of the sides is seven square root of two? Well, this size here is gonna be also seven square root of two, but now I can go ahead and figure out my hypotenuse by just multiplying the seven by two. Seven by two is 14. Remember, you can always do this with Pythagoras, but this is a shortcut when you're taking a test such as the GRE, the GMAT, the SAT, ACT, and so on, because of the time issue. But if you ever forget your ratios, you can just go ahead and do it with Pythagoras. Finally, if this is 11 square root of two, this is 11 square root of two, and this guy's gonna be 22. It's just that easy. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you pretty soon. Again, thanks so much for learning.